history of our anthropology series so uh, we were uh, doing this evolutionary school in our anthropology uh, theories and we've already completed uh, taylor and what is the evolutionary school its basic principle and tenets so today we are going to do our two an uh, another two thinkers that are explicitly mentioned in our syllabus so now let me tell you that uh, let me redraw it for you see in british school there were taylor and fraser theek hai taylor we have finished fraser we are going to do today german school as it is is not mentioned in the in the syllabus so this we are not going to do then american me morgan uh, it's mentioned in our syllabus and then so uh, new evolutionism to baad me aayega it will come later on so abhi ke liye our focus should be this much only because we have to read things according to the paper perspective also so we'll uh, restrict our uh, understanding or lectures to this but then if ever you know kabhi bhi anything comes basic tenets of the school are going to remain the same and you are going to see it theek hai so we will uh, revise the the evolutionary school also because as we read these uh, thinkers you know from whichever the school they will have the core principles of that school only right so in that way tumhara basic bhi revise ho jayega right so james fraser now he was also from the british school and he was a person from english literature and philosophy so this is a brief background about him you don't have to mug this up but just for your understanding and he was influenced by taylor because yesterday we talked about in a way taylor was the first person to start a discipline like anthropology and he was the first person to initiate a uh, you know a study on humans and in a very uh, you know the the way he did right so he was very influenced by uh, taylor and he tried to study the human psyche by comparing the cultures around the world so the same way we had talked about the comparative method ठीक है ना वेर यू ट्राई टू ड्रॉ अ यूनिवर्सल और यू कैन से अ जनरल जनरलाइज यू यू ट्राई एंड गेट टू अ जनरलाइजेशन बाय स्टडिंग डिफरेंट कल्चर्स बाय कंपेरिंग देम सो दिस वॉज कंपेरेटिव मेथड वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट येस्टडे ऑल्सो देन सम ऑफ हिज लिटरेरी वर्क इंक्लूड्स द गोल्डन बो देन द साइकीज टास्क देन टोटमिज्म एंड एक्जोगेमी worship of nature mythology and aftermath see you do not have to mug this up this is just for your understanding so yeah right so, so now uh, i am also telling you these things because sometimes they might not ask you about the evolutionary school right and they might not ask you his uh, you know for example contribution of fraser to evolutionary school they might ask you uh, his uh, contribution to the subject of anthropology so then you are not going to restrict your knowledge to only uh, you know evolutionary school of thought in anthropological theories right then you have to also write whatever you have read about him in other chapters right so keep that in mind right so this is very important for example marinowski has done so much work on kinship then political anthropology like that so you have to remember you have to uh, think about that and write it in marinowski's things right so it's not like that you're going to write only about the anthropological theory so that is why i'm telling you about the thinker also and then i'm t- telling you about what he did in the school also right okay so now sir mostly the same methodology that he tried to see the psychic unity in the uh, character of people that means he saw a universal phenomena that is people all across the world develop things similarly i don't know what is happening to to this guys let me just rub this only so basically though his theory was also uh, based on the principles of savagery barbarism and civilization that means a unilinear pattern gradual happening of that unilinear pattern theek hai stage by stage same thing is happening and he is also saying that psychic unity is there that means all around the world people think similarly and they go through these uh, these uh, stage by stage patterns in a similar way but then he developed this analogy based on magic religion and science 
so now what he says in this in his book the golden bow he tries to say that when people are savage that means they are hunters and gatherers they are the people who do not uh, have a very scientific temperament so uh, they get to certain false principles of cause and effect that means that time people are a little naive and they do not understand the basis of things so they try to uh, you know ek uh, they try they get at a false cause and effect relationship for example uh, they will think that okay if a flood has come so this flood might have come because we might have done something wrong so they perform they will try and perform certain magic to cure it but we know that floods are not caused like this right so certain false cause and effect they will think because they are hunters ga- hunter gatherers because they are not scientific be- beings because they do not have that understanding so they believe the the savage the most basic kind of thing is magic all across the world theek okay? hai then they believe that when man started starts to understand the limitedness of his uh you know be, that he starts to understand okay that not everything man can manipulate with the magic right that means he starts to fail in the magic and he starts to understand that not everything man can do right so they start believing in the supernatural which is the religion and which is which comes at a stage of barbarism barbarism is also the time when there is a little marginal surplus there is a little specialization and we have studied in religion also that religion thoda sa evolve hota hai in those societies right so then it says ki then after barbarism there will come a time when again man will start to find cause and effect relationship but this time it will be with the knowledge it will be with the correct cause and effect principles so that is when civilizations have no science and it becomes a correct cause and effect relationship so this is how he has shown the journey from savage being savage to being civilized i hope you have understood this so this he has also done with the comparative method and he has also done with the secondary sources that means the field works the travelogues the autobiography of the people who have you know uh, traveled to different places so see uh, basics are going to be the same the the pr- basic premise historical method survival of the uh, past uh, yeah relics of the past you can say then uh, historical method comparative method psychic unity everything is the same they have all come to the same conclusion they have all used the same methodology and they all have the same criticism as well that is why they are largely grouped into one group right so they have all, he has also used secondary sources only that means he did not collect his own uh, he did not do any field work though he has created a lot of uh, first hand studies but even his sources to come at this analogy or this uh, whole explanation was a lot from a from secondary sources and that is why he is also considered as an armchair anthropologist then he said na there uh, there'll be uncertainty this all have make made you understand that you know religion is a time when people start to believe believe that there is a status quo that means they try and do not they do not try to change their situation and start to believe that this is beyond our control and we cannot control it right usse pehle there is false cause of cause and effect that is in the time of magic and then after that science aata to people start to return to right cause and effect this is all he believes right and when he studied the whole thing he came to two principles of magic because he was very intrigued about magic and science ka relationship right we have also studied this in religion wala chapter he has given this all magic and religion religion and science ka relationship right so in that he is called magic the bastard sister of science right all these things are also there so he has given two principles of magic also one is law of similarity and second is law of contact so basically what happens is now by law of similarity he means that like produces like now what is this for example uh, in chota nagpur tri- uh, plateau there is a tribe called ho and dn majumdar studied this tribe so uh, what they do is na 
uh, before uh, rain there is lightning and thunder right so lightning and thunder produces a sound right so what this tribe does now it uh, it starts to roll the boulders from a hill top and it creates a similar kind of a sound as the thunder does right so they think that it will produce this sound uh, this sound so then after this you know a uh, rain will come so whenever they want rain to come they will try and replicate that sound right but we know aisa karne se this is a very this is fallacy of uh, affirming the consequent that means it, it is not going to happen if you are going to roll a boulder from a hill top and thinking that now iske baad uh, you know rain will come it is not going to happen so that is what it is that is law of similarity they start to believe that after this this will happen right so this is first of course this is not scientific that is why it is called magic and then law of contact that means for example if somebody wants to hurt somebody so what they'll do is na they'll uh, just take a uh, nail or some hair uh, you know some of their hair of that person and burn it and do something odd with it because they think that once in contact always in contact means if that if that hair was once a part of that person that means if we do anything harmful to this hair now it will ultimately harm that person only right so these were the two principle that he got onto now this is not the part of core classic evolution but then i'm just giving you the uh, you know uh, some ideas because what if uh, only the thinker comes like james fraser 10 marker mein only james fraser comes so now you are not going to write only classical evolution school right because that is not asked from you so you can just make your answer little enriched by writing these tidbits here and there right okay so now this was what it is then he also uh, saw that similarities in simple and modern societies see by uh, drawing drawing analogies between magic and science what he was trying to show that magic is somewhat the relic of the past that means magic in today's societies uh, has is a rel relic of the past in the era of science magic does not hold any scientific evidence but then also if it is there it is a relic of the past so this is how the basic principles of evolutionary school historical uh, studies then comparative method then survivals of the past then you know uh, whatever what else was there in the isme uh historical method comparative studies relics of the past and then the the unilinear sequence that that will only happen right and secondary sources se padhai so all these things are mostly same for everyone theek hai so he was focused only on religion and magic so like uh, taylor or morgan see both of these tried to show evolution in every social institution like beat marriage humne kal baat kiya tha right morgan ke bare mein we'll talk about it marriage then uh, religion then society these both talked about every social institution and its journey from being savage to barbaric to being civilized but the only difference between fraser is that he did not focus on other things he showed the journey from being savage to barbaric to civilized just from magic religion and science so i hope i make my uh, points clear and then rest the criticism is same as taylor and for the whole school it is the same right so now let's just finish lh morgan also today so then classical evolution school would be finished i've covered in a lot detail guys you will not find it anywhere uh, on a youtube platform like that so i think this much should be enough for you right so uh, lh morgan his name was lewis henry morgan so this was his time period and he was a pioneering american anthropologist now you need to uh, know fraser and taylor british theek okay? hai german not in the syllabus we are not reading morgan is american anthropologist so he was from the american school and he was a social theorist and social worker kind of a person right so he, his best known works were on kinship right kinship terminology also we studied na usme uh, he has a big role to play then on social structures right then we studied he studied the trobri and islanders also then he gave his uh, points in political anthropology maybe then 
see he did a lot of work right so not you cannot count lh morgan only as an evolutionist or only as a person who studied the kinship terminology he has done a lot of study he was one of the pioneering person uh, or and a very very important uh, uh, anthropologist so please mark wherever we are studying him right and uh, it is unlikely that only uh, the question will come like that but even then you should remember wherever his works are right so then his theory on social evolution evolution to padhi rahe and his ethnography of the iroquois iroquois indians right he has studied about the iroquois i am so uh, sorry guys if i said trobriand island sorry i am so sorry that was malinowski if if any place i have mentioned he studied trobriand island no that was malinowski right so by mistake if i have me- uh, mentioned it please correct it it was uh, malinowski who studied trobriand islanders okay guys so he studied the iroquois indians theek hai okay so now let's start basically he studied the kinship terminology we have already talked about that in the kinship chapter that he gave two uh, two classifications one is the classificatory kinship terminology and one is descriptive so he believes classificatory kya hota hai where you call the uh, different kin theek hai with the same name right so bilaterals merging co- uh, collaterals like that that kind of uh, uh kinship terminology for example masi uh bua ma mother everybody you are calling mother only right so that is classificatory kind of and highly descriptive would be where there is every for every different relation there is a different name so now that we are not going to study here we have already covered it in that chapter so please go watch it in the kinship terminology chapter so any which ways by this also he tried to show that classificatory kind of uh, terminologies are only present in savage and barbaric theek hai because in classificatory also there are two three kind of classificatory right one is extreme classificatory that means every collateral will merge there right masi ma, bua ma, ma, mother everybody would be called mother then there will be less classificatory like hawaiian and all right usme kya hoga for example only masi and mother is called mother and bua is called with another name right so here not all by uh, you know uh, collaterals are merging so this is another type so he is uh, putting these these classificatory kinds in savage and barbaric that means these kind of societies which have classificatory uh, kinship terminologies he is basically categorizing him as being savage and barbaric then comes the descriptive where you know you have complex uh, uh, every person has a different name so that only in civilized societies so by this he has tried to show different social institutions in the prism of savage Uh, being savage barbaric and civilized now i'll tell you don't worry theek hai so first thing is this so in his book ancient societies he said that man man uh, mankind commences his career from the bottom of the scale that means every mankind or any civilization would start from being a savage and then make its journey towards being civilized so this is a gross uh, generalization right so what classical evolutionists do, uh, did they generalize everything as being savage barbaric and civilized so this is what a big criticism of them is also that everything cannot be generalized like that right everybody has their own journey you can't generalize like that so then uh, for example if i have to take an example let's go on to the next page i'll just make a table and try to make you understand we have already seen in kinship terminology how he has uh, said things so basically uh, if we have to show savagery barbarism and civilization he savagery bhi he divided into three classes upper sav- uh, lower savagery middle savagery and upper savagery then similarly for lower barbarism i'll just write like this middle barbarism and upper barbarism 
एंड देन सिविलाइजेशन ओनली सिविलाइजेशन उसमें देर इज़ नो डिफरेंस ठीक है सो इफ दीज आर द कैटेगरीज ही कैरेक्टराइज दिस टाइम विद द काइंड टेक्नोलॉजी में लिख देती हूँ यहाँ पे सो बेसिकली इस टाइम पे लोअर सेवेजरी में देर वॉज डोमिनेंट टेक्नोलॉजी वॉज फ्रूट्स एंड नट्स ठीक है सो ही बेसिकली बिलीव दैट पीपल वर फॉर एजिंग सो दे वर जस्ट गैदरिंग फ्रूट्स एंड नट्स वट एवर दे वर फाइंडिंग एंड दे वर ईटिंग इट एंड उनका लाइफ वॉज डोमिनेटेड बाई दिस टेक्नोलॉजी देन इन द मिडल टाइम्स द डोमिनेंट टेक्नोलॉजी बिकेम फिश एंड फायर दैट मीन्स फायर केम इन द मिडल सैवेज पीरियड दैन अपर सैवेज में देर वॉज बो एंड एरो सी एवरी टाइम यू सी द टेक्नोलॉजी विल कीप ऑन बिकमिंग अ लॉट एडवांस्ड ओके लेट मी डू इट लाइक दिस ठीक है then in the lower barbarism man invented pottery so this was roughly the time because when pottery came roughly around the same time agriculture marginal cultivation all of that came so till bow and arrow the man is hunter and uh, hunter and gatherer only from barbarism the pottery domestication of animal starts so in next he says domestication of domestication of animals theek okay? hai then he says after this uh metallurgy came in the in the upper barbarism that means that means he is saying that metallurgy though we believe that metallurgy came in the uh copper bronze age iron age right सो so, हम उसको सिविलाइजेशन में डालते हैं बट देन यू विल फाइंड दीज हेयर एंड देयर थोड़ा बहुत बिकॉज फॉर एग्जाम्पल ही इज सेंग डोमेस्टिकेशन ऑफ एनिमल्स केम आफ्टर एग्रीकल्चर बट वी नो दैट इट केम अराउंड द सेम टाइम राइट सो थोड़ा बहुत ऊपर नीचे है सो ही इज जस्ट शोन इट लाइक दैट एंड सिविलाइजेशन ही मार्क्स बाई स्पीच एंड साइंस स्क्रिप्ट ऑल दीज थिंग्स ठीक है स्क्रिप्ट स्पीच साइंस एक्चुअली यू राइट दिस इज स्क्रिप्ट ओनली ठीक है सो दिस वॉज द डोमिनेंट टूल टेक्नोलॉजी नाउ इफ यू हैव टू से अबाउट हाउ आर द फैमिली स्ट्रक्चर्स इन दीज टाइम्स बिकॉज दिस इज सैवेज दिस इज बारबरिज्म एंड दिस इज सिविलाइजेशन तो सैवेजरी के टाइम पे ही बिलीव दैट सबसे पहले तो देर वॉज कॉन्सेंगुनियस फैमिलीज कॉन्सेंगुनियस फैमिली क्या हो गया वेन दे वेन द प्राइमरी किन्स और वेरी क्लोज रिलेटिव वर ऑल्सो मीटिंग विद ईच अदर दैट मीन्स लाइक पीपल लाइक फादर एंड सन मदर एंड सॉरी फादर एंड डॉटर मदर एंड सन लाइक दैट ओके सो इवन दे वर हैविंग क्लोज रिलेशन विद ईच अदर एंड देन केम द पुनालू एंड इसको मैं डिवाइड कर देती हूँ लेट मी डिवाइड द थ्री स्टेज लाइक दिस सो इट विल बी मोर क्लियर टू यू ओके देन इन द सेम एरा अराउंड द सैवेज टाइम पुनालू एंड फैमिलीज ऑल्सो केम पुनालून फैमिली में क्या होता है नाउ नॉट दीज पुनालून ओके नॉट वेरी क्लोज किन्स वर मीटिंग विद ईच अदर लाइक फादर एंड डॉटर वर नॉट मीटिंग मदर एंड सन सो इंसेस्ट काइंड ऑफ थिंग केम ठीक है सो देर वॉज अ लिटल लिटल सिस्टमेटाइज यू नो फैमिलीज वर अ लिटल सिस्टमेटाइज नाउ ठीक है सो देर वॉज नोट नॉट दैट क्लोज रिलेशनशिप्स मेकिंग देन केम द सिंडाजमियम ठीक है सिंडाजमियम मियन फैमिलीज इन दिस देर वॉज यू कैन से एंड ऑल ओवर द बारबरिज्म यू कैन से इट इट इज़ लाइक अ पॉली पॉली गैमस मैरिज वेर देर आर मल्टीपल पार्टनर्स राइट एंड देर आर ग्रुप मैरिज इज हैपनिंग बट दे आर नॉट रिलेटेड टू ईच अदर सो सिस्टमेटाइज थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग एंड ही बिलीव पॉली गेमी भी टूवर्ड्स द एंड आ गई दैट मीन्स बिकॉज द सोसाइटी इज मोर और लेस इन द एग्रीकल्चर पीरियड बिकेम पेट्रियाकल ड्यू टू मोर इंटेंस लेबर डन बाय मैन एंड मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट वर्क वॉज टेकन ऑन बाय मैन सो द सोसाइटीज बिकेम पेट्रियाकल एंड विद पेट्रियाकी पॉली एंड्री फिनिश एंड पॉली गेमी वॉज द डोमिनेंट फैमिली स्ट्रक्चर राइट सो नाउ यू हैव टू लिंक एवरी थिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड थिंग्स ठीक है एंड इन सिविलाइजेशन ही सेज मोनोगामी दैट मीन्स वन वन वाइफ वन हजबेंड सो दिस इज हाउ ही यू नो showed the uh, journey of savage barbarism civilization in family structures similarly you can say political organization also in that chapter we had seen sabse basic to band rahega 
ठीक है देन बैंड के बाद देवर क्लैन सिस्टम्स देन यू नो लाइक क्लैंस फ्राट्रीज लाइक दैट देन देर देर वुड बी अ टाइम थोड़ा सा और कॉम्प्लेक्स होगा तो ट्राइब आ जाएगा देन चीफ डम आ जाएगा राइट एंड देन फाइनली स्टेट राइट देन स्टेट विल कम राइट सो दिस इज हाउ ही हैज़ ट्राइड टू डिफाइन ऑल द ऑल द सोशो एंड किनशिप टर्मिनोलॉजी तो वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट राइट यहाँ तक इट्स क्लासिफिकेटरी ओनली एंड देन हेयर इट बिकम्स डिस्क्रिप्टिव सो दिस इज हाउ एल एच मॉर्गन हैज़ ट्राइड टू शो द जर्नी ऑफ जर्नी ऑफ द होल बारबरिज्म टू सेवेजरी टू सिविलाइजेशन सो द कोर आइडिया रिमेन्स द सेम वो ऑल थ्री ऑफ देम हैव ट्राइड टू मेक इट दे हैव जस्टिफाइड इट इन देयर ओन वेज राइट बट द बेसिक्स रिमेन द सेम सो क्रिटिसिजम इफ वी हैव टू टेक हिज ओनली क्रिटिसिजम यू कैन से दैट सिविलाइजेशन स्टार्टेड इन द न्यू वर्ल्ड ही बिलीव्ड बट एविडेंस स्टेट्स इट टू बी इन द सेंट्रल एशिया वट इज इट इज सेंग बेसिकली न्यू वर्ल्ड अमेरिका एंड दैट सब कॉन्टिनेंट इज कॉल्ड राइट but because he was from there he studied mostly there and his work was uh, in that continent so he believed whatever happened happened in the new world but that is not the true we know ivc is one of the most oldest uh, civilizations then there was uh, mesopotamian egyptian which didn't happen in the the in the american subcontinent right so it, it he also had a very highly ethnocentric view because what they had they believed that was the you know uh, the the flag standard the gold standard of everything but that is not the truth ivc this is the most oldest civilization right so they uh, think thought very ethnocentrically theek okay? hai they were very uh, very racist when they described other people as being savage theek okay? hai that means they they do not they they it was very highly derogatory right so i hope you understand now and then other example is aztecs they used metal but they don't have state organization so now you can't put such people in one category right ab dekho metallurgy ke hisab se they would be somewhere here but then they still had a very very primitive kind of a state technology right even though hum metallurgy ko we uh, try and connect metallurgy with civilization but he is called metallurgy in upper barbarism so that is also questionable and then another example is hawaiian society it's a civilization but still uses classificatory terminology come back a hawaiian society is a civilization but it calls its kinship terminal terminology as classificatory so now this is how you can refute his whole uh thing also and then rest would be the same that they did not do the field work they were ethnocentric uh you know it uh, uh, talk, highly talked very derogatory then psychic unity ka concept they uh, ignored diffusion happened functionalist ka criticism trans boas ka criticism you need to go back to yesterday's lecture and rest the criticism is the same and we have completed evolutionist tomorrow we'll start with uh, uh the next next uh, anthropological theory I hope you guys liked it uh, and if you did please like share and subscribe guys thank you